everybody. Uh, we're going to paint some blood today. My blood specifically. Well, not like my blood, uh, but the style I like to paint blood in. This technique was born of two things. Uh, my personal mix of style and realism and the fact that I can't paint. Not well, at least. If you don't know who I am, I'm Abby Esparza, a creative compositor uh, with over 10 years of experience. And if you don't know where you are, uh, you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. As I said, I firmly believe that anyone can do this. No painting skills are required. However, I would highly, highly recommend a drawing tablet. Honestly, you could do this with a mouse, but I've just only ever done this using a tablet. So it's just a warning. I'm a giant baby who refuses to not use a tablet. I will provide some brushes, the blood swatch set, and the full res PSD for our example here today, and that'll be linked down in the description. I'm always super excited when I can do that for you guys, and thanks to using our own resources from photomanipulation.com, I am able to. So, uh, thank you, me. <laughs> I have this really stupid thing I want to try in editing. Let's see if it works. So here is our swatch set. Uh, don't feel obligated to stick to these colors strictly, they're more of a jumping off point. I like a more ruby red tone of blood because if you go too warm red, I feel like it starts to look like ketchup, but that could just be me. Here are our uh, brushes. Uh, very simple, a, a soft round brush, a, a mostly hard round brush, a hard wet brush, and a wet brush with some size variations. We'll be sticking to only these four brushes. Keep things nice and simple. So first things first, we have to paint the base of our blood. The shape of the drips, splatters, or puddles. I feel like drips are the easiest, so we'll be painting some of those today. Let's create a new layer. Now, we can paint our base one of two ways. Which way we choose will depend on the circumstance. Let's start with the most common, blood on skin. Nine out of ten times when painting on skin, I will set my base layer to multiply and this will give the base very slight transparency, so the blood will interact with the natural shadows underneath. For the brush, I like either the hard wet edge here, or a default hard round brush. Nowadays, I almost always use that wet edged brush. I'll talk about why here in a moment, but first let's talk about color. If I'm setting my layer to multiply, I'll usually use the medium red shade. However, this will depend on a few different factors, mainly lighting and skin color. You can always do a few test strokes and see what shade works best. I don't recommend using the light red here, or else your blood might start looking very cheap horror movie, which is a vibe though. It's going to be between either that dark or medium red shade most of the time. While we're here, uh, let's take a quick look at the differences between using the wet edge brush and the default hard edge brush. It really just comes down to texture. I like the slight inconsistency that the wet edge brush will give the blood base, while a solid round brush gives you a very a solid base. Neither is right or wrong. It all comes down to personal preference. I used to prefer one, and now I prefer the other. So we have the hard wet brush and the medium red color, with a layer set to multiply. We do want to make sure pressure for opacity is off, with size pressure on. And with all that checking out, we can finally start to paint our base. As I said, this shape we're painting is the shape of the blood itself. We're just painting. But I have some general tips that have helped me a whole lot throughout these years. Tip one, and my favorite, use references. Don't just try and guess. Find images that are similar to the blood you're trying to paint, a blood with a similar flow. For drips, you'll notice I try and always make sure there is a fatter bead of blood at the end of the drip. It also curves to whatever it's flowing over. And since it's on skin, and skin for the most part is smooth, I make the stream of blood fairly smooth as well. All of these things I learned from looking at references. One of the biggest mistakes I used to make all the time when I first started to paint blood was to make it really uneven and overly chunky looking, even though it was flowing on a smooth surface. So having a reference or multiple references will help you through the entire process, not just painting the base. That being said, don't try to directly mimic or copy what you see. 
even if I'm trying to recreate my own effect for a tutorial. Uh, if I focus too hard on creating a shape one for one, it's always a really frustrating and two ends up looking worse. Build shapes up organically and naturally. Let the blood flow where the blood wants to flow, and then use those references and tutorials as a general guidance. Tip 2. Don't overthink things. You can adjust the base at any time, adding, taking away, and slowly refining it as you go. There's no reason to paint the shape perfect your first go. I like to actually paint something really quickly and kind of sloppily, and then use a hard eraser brush to refine whatever that shape ends up being. I find carving out something is easier than creating something from nothing. At this stage, it will look overly sharp, uneven, and even sloppy in certain areas. Just try and focus on the big picture for now. It'll look bad before it looks good. A tip of three. In fact, I'm going to repeat that again. It will look bad before it looks good. This effect really comes together at the end once those specular highlights are added. So just trust in the process. Tip four, try making longer strokes instead of little smaller uh, scratchy strokes. That way your blood will appear more even. If I'm painting a drip of blood with a nice long trail, I try and make that trail in one stroke. Then I'll refine the shape with a hard eraser brush. Again, there's no reason to nail the shape on your first go. And finally, tip five, start with a single drip if you feel confused or unsure. If you can paint a drip, you can cover anything and everything in blood. It all starts with that single drip. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Remember, you can continue to adjust the base during the lighting and shading steps coming up. But before that, remember I said there are two ways to paint your base. This is one. Suppose you find that that multiply layer is not working due to maybe some lighting issues, or the surface material is just not playing well. In that case, you'll paint your base using a normal layer, a solid brush, and the dark red shade. Now you'll also use a normal layer if you want to make strings of blood or drops of blood that aren't on a surface. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Say I wanted a string of blood going from the chin to her finger, like she touched her chin and then is dragging her finger away. I'm going to paint a line going from the chin to the finger. Just something really general, uh, the general shape I want it to be. And then we can focus on building up the connecting points. So the part where the string of blood is coming from the chin would be fatter or heavier with blood uh, than a bead of blood maybe on the tip of the nail. Just something real quick and simple for now. That's looking perfectly fine. Uh, finally, we want to use a hard round eraser brush to thin out the area where the string of blood is bottoming out, like it's stretching and pulling. Areas like this are where you really want to keep the material in mind. Blood is a liquid, but it's thicker, uh, with a higher surface tension, slightly viscous. It holds more shape compared to, say, water. I've always found it very helpful to kind of imagine the movement of things, even in these static images. And so that gives us our base blood. Most of it is on this multiply layer, and then the rest is on this normal layer. We are keeping it nice and simple, but blood can be as complex as you need it to be. We're gonna move right along to shading. Darkening that blood to make it seem substantial and thick. <laughs> I said it like that. Thick. <laughs> let's create a new layer and clip it into the multiply base. Then let's grab our soft round brush and bring its flow down to uh, maybe 10% or so. Your flow will change as you paint, but you'll want to start low for this step. And then let's grab our dark red color. Let's take a look at some references to know where we want to paint that dark red. So blood is darker where it's thicker and most concentrated. 
it's a lighter, more vibrant red, where it's thinner and kind of spread out. Blood is also semi-translucent, so if there is enough light shining on it, some of that bright red will appear, likely on the outer areas. So my general rule of thumb is to keep the dark red in the middle of any blood trails. And at the ends where that bead of blood is. These areas are thicker, and so they are darker. I also add some dark red if the blood is in a darker location. No light means there's nothing there to shine through or onto that blood. In fact, blood in darker areas can look almost black. If you make your blood too bright in a dark location, that's when things will start looking like red paint. Now when the blood is in a lighter area, I make sure that at least some of those edges stay that medium red color. Notice how I'm really trying to focus the dark red in the middle of that medium red color. Of the top of blood trails also tend to be lighter, the trail becomes thinner as the drop of blood drips across the skin. Thinner blood appears lighter. Now we will be adding more light, but we still want to try and utilize that natural medium red shade of the base. But what about our stringy bit of blood here, you might be asking? It's going to be the same exact process, only uh, let's create a new layer, and we're going to clip that layer, just like before, but set the clipped layer to multiply, so it darkens the normal layer. And then we'll still use that darker red color. Now, while adding that darker red, you might have to go back and touch up your base layers, especially the ones set to multiply, removing any streaks in your base layer. Don't worry about any areas that look messy still or overly sharp, we'll get to that here soon. In fact, with my shadows done, uh, let's just get to the um, fidelity of this blood right now. We're going to go back to our base layer and grab the smudge tool. Uh, set to around 15% strength or so. And we're going to smudge the edges of the blood. This will make the edges less harsh, which will make the blood lay on the skin much more naturally. We can also use the smudge brush to blend out any streaky strokes or areas where the blood would be smudged and smeared. This is a small detail, but you do not want to skip it. You always want to make sure your blood has the same image fidelity as your stock image, meaning your blood is only as sharp as the image you're placing it on. Don't be shy when smudging. You can always hit an area with a hard edged eraser if you end up overdoing it. You're probably going to end up smudging things more than you might think you need to. I'm a big fan of hitting uh, edges with the smudge tool in general. The smudge tool highly underrated, in my opinion. And with that out of the way, let's move on to lighting. We want to create a new layer and clip it above that dark red layer. Then we want to grab our light red color. And we're going to keep the same brush. Actually, let's lower the flow to like 5%. Something very, very low. So we want to build up that light red just like the dark red. Only we'll focus the light red on the edges of the blood and any areas where the light would be hitting. So, the opposite of the dark red. Remember, light blood means thin blood or bright light. Or both. 
See, we want our blood to have a lot of color dimension, so it looks deep and thick, but still translucent. Otherwise, it'll start looking like red paint. And I just hate blood that looks like paint. The only thing worse is blood that looks like ketchup. We want deep, luscious, thick, velvety blood. Kind of like liquid rubies. The very Sweeney Todd. That's why when searching for blood references, I actually encourage both real photos and artistic references. Because real blood is pretty bright, uh, surprisingly bright. And sometimes that does look great. But stylistically speaking, I feel like the majority of the time, blood looks better, darker, and thicker than maybe real blood is. And like every horror movie agrees with me, so that obviously means I'm right. Also, most stock images of blood I use fake blood, and people are really out here smearing ketchup on a white piece of paper and calling it blood. And I'm having none of it. And everybody, get ready, because it's time for my favorite part of anything ever, adding the specular highlights. Let's create a new layer. We're going to use the basic highlight brush, who'd have thunk? I find a smaller brush works best. For color, we have some choices. We can grab this super light red shade, the straight up white, or you can use a highlight that would better match your image's lighting. So let's say you have a heavier blue light. These lights would appear maybe a pale blue. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the pale red. And let's go to one of the blood beads. And we're going to paint two dots, different shapes and imperfect. Don't overthink it. Two dots right on the bead. Then we're going to hit them with the eraser brush. Just a touch. Just enough to give them variation in their opacity. And that's it. Let's do it again. Paint some dots. And then hit it with the eraser. Now you're not always going to have to do the erasing bit, uh, but it does help keep the highlights from being too strong and overly flat. Which will really help with the photorealistic feel. And we're going to keep on doing that. Now, keep in mind, the placement isn't random. Highlights are a big factor in the shape of your blood, or vice versa. Basically, I like putting rounder highlights on rounder droplets, which is what we're doing right now. In a moment, I'll show you some tricks for the longer trails of blood. Again, references, references, references. No placing random dots everywhere. We're taking a guess, but it's an educated guess. See, another big issue I had when I used to paint blood was adding way too many highlights everywhere, even in the shadows. So, a uh, big tip, don't place strong highlights in shadows randomly. The darker the area, the weaker the highlight, and some places shouldn't get any highlights at all. Uh, there are exceptions, but I feel like it falls under the you need to know the rules to break them effectively. Otherwise, you're just doing random things and hoping for the best. And while uh, I do that a lot, we really want to try and avoid it. So let's take a look at how to create some longer highlights. Now first, you can absolutely just paint thin lines, partially erasing them just like those dots. Something like this. However, I also like doing larger highlights in those kind of larger areas. I'm sure they have a fancy name, I don't know what it is. <laughs> but let's increase our brush size. Then let's draw a thicker line. Now I always do this a couple of times until I get a line that I think looks good. Basically a line with a nice taper, flows with the shape of the blood, isn't crooked or leaning too left or right, uh, not too long, not too short, and not too thick or thin. And I think this one's looking good. So let's take a soft eraser brush and partially erase half of the line on its longest side. Think of it like a transparency gradient, going from mostly transparent to mostly opaque. If you're having a hard time with this, you can always try and bring down the flow of your eraser. But don't overthink it, it's honestly easier to do than it is to explain. We're creating a shape and partially erasing half of it. And now we're going to hit the full highlight with the eraser. Notice how I'm using the edge of the brush. I'm not going directly over it. 
Again, this will help blend the highlight and ensure it's not overly harsh or flat. A bit more photorealistic. Just a bit. <laughs> and you just want to keep on adding these highlights until you're happy. I personally like a pretty glossy blood, but a minimal amount of highlights can also look really nice and much less stylized. So this is kind of where you can start feeling out your own preferences. Like I said, my blood used to be overly chunky and it honestly looked like strawberry jelly. Using fewer highlights or larger highlights really helped create a smoother looking flow of blood. Now, if this was on a bumpy surface, maybe like rocks or something, you'd want to make sure that blood reflected that. If you're starting to just kind of get the feel of things, a stick to smoother surfaces and drips of blood, and then from there you'll be able to attempt bigger, more complex shapes. And now, while the highlights might be my favorite step, it's definitely not the last. A few places in the blood still look way too transparent and thin, along with areas that are just not blending well with the surface blow. Uh, let's fix the thickness of the blood, uh, with what I call an extra layer. This is a new layer, set to overlay, and placed below the blood base. We'll switch between the wet edged brush, the hard edged brush, and a soft round brush. It's just going to depend on what you need. For the color, we'll use primarily that medium red, but you might need to dip into the other shades as well. Again, it'll just depend on what and where you're painting. And we will use this layer to thicken our blood, painting red directly under the blood base. We still want to be very, very careful of overly light areas or overly dark spots. But in a darkly lit photo like this, some areas of the blood will appear very dark and that's perfectly fine. We can also use this layer to paint in some areas of blood that appear a more thin and almost translucent. So places where the blood is just kind of smeared, just barely washed over that area. Actually, I want to jump from this image real quick. So in darker images like this, you can actually use overlay layers to paint thicker looking blood. Most of the blood on this breastplate here is just on an overlay layer and then some highlights. But that's because of how dark the color grade for this image is. If we flip that off, then it'll look real crazy. Uh, you can see the blood looks pretty bad. But see, this image was built with that color grade turned on, so the blood was painted in a very dark environment. Let's hop back here. I just wanted to point out that you will have to adjust from image to image. For instance, if this overlay layer is looking really bad, lower the opacity, or maybe try soft light instead. If you're like, I don't even need this extra layer, then don't use it. You're just gonna wanna adjust as you go, that's all I'm saying. Now this blood is looking much thicker and goopier, but it still feels disconnected. And that's because we have no shadows. Blood is thick enough to cast a shadow. Also, adding shadow directly under the blood will help further thicken those areas. Like I said, I like a nice thick blood. So let's create a new layer set to multiply. And let's grab a soft round brush and set the flow to around 10% again. And then let's select that dark red shade because we never paint shadows in black. And we're going to paint shadows just wherever the blood is beating or any other spots that are kind of raised and extra thick. And remember, you can add the shadow directly under the base, 
to darken an area if you need to. Make sure your blood doesn't look like it's floating, uh, so just kind of keep the shadow pretty tight and pretty subtle. Uh, this is looking fine. Finally, we can finish with some light blooms on a new layer that the screen. Let's grab a soft round brush and the light red shade. Now, I like to mask this layer to the shape of my bases, and we can do that by control clicking the base shape to get a selection, and then we can hold shift to add multiple selections. Then we add a layer mask to the screen layer. And now we can paint some looms of light red on those areas that are getting a lot of light. It's okay to paint directly onto darker areas if they're in light. Um, this will give the blood a lot of depth in, in my experience. Like the blood is thicker, uh, but it's still having light shined on it. Holy cow, guys, I did not think this would be this long of a video. And to be honest, I haven't even done the screencast yet. My script speaking time is just saying like 25 minutes. Here, look, you can also see how I literally script out every word. I even left stuff out, uh, stuff I'm saving for my course, which is still not out, but one day will be. It will be truly glorious when that day finally comes. In the meantime, you should watch my three Photoshop hacks video uh, because I was very pleased with how that one came out. Uh, other than that, like if you like, subscribe if you really like. I'm Abby Esparza with photo I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. I'll see you next time. It's legitimately like one or two a.m. Going to be long night.